So today we're going to attempt to clean the entire house from top to bottom. Since Christmas we've become overwhelmed with clutter and to be honest it's just gotten the best of me. So I'm going to give you a little tour of the house and kind of show you what we're dealing with. Some of the rooms aren't too bad and some you can't even see the floor. Now I absolutely love Christmas but this year I've just found it so difficult because of how overwhelming all of the new toys are. And I'm not saying that to sound ungrateful at all. It's just I'm a messy person by nature. And more toys equals more clutter equals more mess. We've actually done declutter January this year, which has been really, really helpful. But we still have a load of things from the boys' room that we need to go through and hopefully donate. We've already managed to gather around 16 bags of things to give to the charity shops, which is really good. I'm really happy with that. And it's also a great opportunity to teach the boys about giving to people who don't have as much as we do. I always say that on my TikToks. I think it's so important to acknowledge all of the blessings and all of the amazing things we have in our life and be grateful for it and practice gratitude every day. That's the kind of mindset I want to instill in my boys. And yeah, I thought I'd take this opportunity now to kind of introduce myself to anyone who's not here through TikTok. So I'm Remy. I have two boys, a six-year-old and a 16-month-old. And I started making these videos to help people like me feel less alone. People who, no matter how hard they try, cannot seem to keep on top of the mess. I want people to know that it's normal, that there are so many of us out there who are the same and that untidiness isn't a moral failing. There are so many other amazing qualities to you. You are more than just messy or tidy. But yeah, I've always struggled with being untidy, ever since I can remember. I honestly just think my brain's wired in a way that means I can't just pick up as I go along throughout the day. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous. But it's true, I just do not possess that gift. But I try every single day, I'll get there. And that's what matters really, isn't it? That we try, that we keep trying to do better. Because I've always been this way, even before having kids, bringing kids into the picture has been something that's really difficult to navigate when it comes to mess and chaos. Because now not only am I having to pick up after my own things, but I'm having to pick up for the other humans that live in the house with me too. And as much as I say being messy isn't a character flaw, children do deserve to live in a tidy space. So yeah, this is what my social media accounts are all about. And I hope I'm able to motivate you in some way or just help you feel less alone. This account is a safe place. You won't find any judgment here. Being the way we are, I'm sure you already know we're no stranger to other people's criticisms. And I always say to people who question me, do you not think that all of the criticisms you can throw at me I've not already thrown at myself, but I've learned to love me for me. I'm an amazing, attentive mum. I'm a loyal friend and a loving partner. We have to look for the good qualities within ourselves. But anyway, that's me. Welcome to my account and I hope you enjoy it here. Let's get into it. So we decided to start with the messiest room in the house, the boys' room. The boys don't actually sleep in here at the minute. Um, we're a co-sleeping family. So basically, it's just a playroom slash storage room right now. Especially while we're trying to sort through and find space for all of the new Christmas stuff. Which, as of that moment, felt like the most impossible task in the world. I'm just glad my partner had the day off work to help me. I really wanted to get the entire house done in one day. It's something I've never been able to achieve before. There's always at least one room in the house that's just complete chaos. And to be honest, I sometimes feel jealous of people that manage to have it all together. So I made a commitment to myself that in 2023, I would take one day out of each month and do an entire house clean, no matter how long it took me. And I'm going to film it for you as well. So expect one of these every month. I don't know how bad it will be each time. Hopefully not as bad as this, but it is what it is. I would really love to keep on top of it though and keep it nice and tidy for as long as possible. I've actually booked in a day in February with my mum where she's going to have the boys for the entire day and that way I can just knuckle down and get it done with no distractions. And at the same time I'll also know my boys are being well looked after and having fun because I get so much mum guilt cleaning when the boys are around. I just want to be present with them and spend time with them. I don't want to spend my entire time cleaning because, and I know it doesn't look like it, I do make the downstairs at the house at least spotless every day. It gets trashed in seconds but I still do it. 
So you can see we're starting to make a tiny bit of progress here now, but this is three hours into the day already. And I was starting to get really, really stressed because I thought I've still got the entire rest of the house to do. I was also really conscious that it was my boyfriend's day off and I felt really guilty that this is what he was having to do. But he always stays so lovely and positive. He really grounds me. I'm so lucky. That cupboard there with all of the storage containers used to be smushed chock full of my son's costumes. And I'd fold them up over and over again and they'd always get pulled out and smeared all over the floor in seconds. So now we've got a bag for them that hangs on the back of the door. We're always trying to find like new storage solutions because we have so little space in this house. Hopefully we'll have a bigger place one day. We are saving, but right now we have to make the most of what we've got. And honestly, I'm just so grateful to be here. When I had my first son, I was living with my parents. I managed to get a job in this house within a few months of each other. And I literally live next door to where I work, which is a good thing because I don't drive. Passing my driving test is on my bucket list for 2020. But yeah, it's also a five minute walk away from my son's school. So to me, all of these things are such blessings. I'm so lucky. If I think back to five years ago, I wouldn't have dreamed that I'd have been in this situation with someone who I adore, another baby, and just living a gorgeous life. Yeah, it might be messy and it might be chaotic, but we're so happy. And I have big dreams for myself and my family. I want to make an amazing life for them. And all of that starts within the mind, with a great mindset and an attitude of gratitude. I am certain of that. This is what I speak about in my video about how I grew my TikTok following. I now have over 130k followers over there, which is crazy to me. But if I didn't have a positive attitude and determination, there's no way that would have happened. And I think social media is an amazing opportunity to improve your life. And that opportunity is there for everyone. And I think that's awesome. We all have things that we can share and things that will help others that we can share on social media. And if I can do it, you can do it too. Social media doesn't have to be this shallow and vapid thing that drags our attention away from our loved ones and consumes us with doom and gloom or makes us feel bad about our lives and the way we look. It can also be used as a tool for good to uplift and inspire and educate and motivate and just make people laugh. Humour is one of the best gifts you can give to a person. And here are all of the bags we've got so far from this room. Thank God for that. We're getting somewhere, but honestly, it's nearly school pickup and we've literally not even finished this room yet. Obviously, after school pickup, I have to do dinner time and bath time and evening routine. So it was at this point I was thinking, mm, I'm probably not going to get the entire house done in one day. And that thought really stressed me out because I thought, I'm going to get this done and then someone's going to go and trash another room and this is always what happens. This is why I wanted it to get done in 24 hours so I could have a clean house, even if it was for just one hour, just a clean house for one hour. But that's what it's like having kids, isn't it? But to be honest, I'm more of a problem. It's me. I'm the problem. Hi. Seeing the floor in this bedroom after not being able to see it for at least two months was the best feeling in the world. Although I hate to break it to you, do you know when I was giving you a tour of the house, that corner of bags in the kitchen? Yeah, that's Christmas presents that we haven't even found space for yet. Does anyone else shave the carpet with razors to get things off the floor that are really tricky? My kids smush baby bell into everything. But yeah, that's the floor done and now I'm going to try and make the bed. I am the worst bed maker in the entire world. I don't know if it's because I'm so short, but it's just, it's just awful. I can never make it look neat. So my best will have to do is as good as it's going to get. Since we had the baby, my partner sleeps in here when he's on the early shifts. He has to get up at five and the baby still breastfeeds all the way through the night. So at least one of us will be getting sleep. And this is the first room done. Hopefully we can keep on top of it this time. I'm going to do my best this year because my son's six now to implement little changes into our routine that help him tidy. I know firsthand how hard it can be as a messy child to keep on top of things. And I truly believe organisation and keeping a tidy space is a skill that's learnt and taught, not just one that comes naturally. Not to everybody anyway. So I'll always say to him, whenever we need to clean, we'll do it together. I think what I'm going to do is write some lists and try and make it fun. 
he'll do some things and I'll do some things and I think that'll make it less overwhelming. I always write lists for myself as well when I'm trying to clean. So this corner here is usually where my dog's crate is, where she sleeps. But over Christmas we'd stayed with my mum for a few days and obviously took the crate with us. And then when we got back, somehow all of the Christmas stuff ended up in that corner and the dog's crate ended up under the table. So you'll see a while into the video that that corner is absolutely disgusting. It's covered with dog hair and yeah, it's just gross. But yeah, I'm taking the final bits and bobs up to the bedroom. We're going to sort through that and then hopefully get onto another room. I hope you're finding this motivating, by the way. Please let me know if you do. I'm used to making like three, four minute long videos on TikTok. I've never done anything this long before. So if I'm rambling on and I'm boring, I'm sorry. But these are the kind of videos that I used to love to watch, like to get me in the mood for cleaning. I absolutely love a speed cleaning video. I think they're so motivating to watch someone get so much done in a short space of time. To me, it's on the same level as people picking blackheads. I love watching those. I'll fall asleep to those. My boyfriend thinks it's absolutely disgusting. We're weird, aren't we, us humans? The things we find calming and satisfying. Like so many of us, especially us women, love to binge watch true crime. What's that all about? Bot fly lava and earwax extractions, that's another one I'll binge. And people cleaning dirty rugs, oh, that is so satisfying. But anyway, we've made it into the hallway, yay! Might not be an actual room, but at least it's not the boys' bedroom still. I think at this point we'd been cleaning for at probably six hours and it was starting to get really tedious. So I started to get a wash together because for the longest time before decluttering all of the clothes, there was just mountains of clothes on top and falling off the laundry baskets. It was so frustrating. Every time I walked up the stairs, I was just irritated because there was just clothes and clutter everywhere. If anyone fancies watching me declutter all the clothes, that's on my TikTok. And can I just tell you something? Because looking back, pulling all of that laundry stuff out, knowing what I know now, that my boyfriend was going to leave tissue in his work trousers and it was going to go all over the clothes. Oh, I wish I could go back in time and stop myself. I'm never doing his washing again. He can do it all himself from now on. He was milking that cold as well for attention. That's why all the tissue is in there, because he was showing off that he had a cold. Anyway, finally made it to the kitchen and doing the first round of washing up. And I found out through TikTok that the way I wash up really, really winds Americans up. Because apparently the British don't rinse their pots. <laughs> so I'm really conscious about it now and try and wash all of the suds off. You Americans are right though. I was never told that we needed to rinse it off loads. And now I'm being told left, right and centre that it causes cancer. As if there weren't enough toxins and things to worry about. I'm just glad my postpartum anxiety isn't as bad as it was as the first time round when I had my first son because comments like that would have sent me spiralling. My postpartum anxiety has centred around the kids' health and honestly, it was horrendous. Just saw it in the grotty dog cage corner here. I told you it was revolting. But yeah, when I had my first son in 2006, I was really big into Instagram and it was around the time where like mum life and all of the crunchy mums were all on Instagram. And being a vulnerable and hormonal first-time mum, I really got sucked into it all and I was terrified of everything. At the time, I didn't realise how bad I was, but looking back now, it was awful. I made the whole family go whole food, plant-based vegan. I was terrified of taking my son to the doctor. I didn't like being away from him from a, for a second. I didn't want even family members to hold him because I thought they were going to hurt him. And yeah, it was pretty miserable, to be honest. There were obviously amazing times too. I'd just had my first baby and I was completely and utterly in love. But for the first time, I was scared of the world. I was scared of everything. And these are the things we aren't really told before we have kids. How much it alters your brain chemistry. You have a baby and you come out a whole new person yourself. Just prepping the table for dinner here. We haven't sat at this table for the longest time because it's just been cluttered up. But yeah, when I had my second son five years later, it was really interesting because I still had postpartum anxiety, but I was able to recognise the triggers and when I was kind of being irrational and stop myself. And I'll give you a good example of this. So one of my best friends came round to visit him. He must have been about two weeks old. And obviously she stayed for a while. She held him. We had a good chat. And when she left, I noticed that there was a speck of red on his baby grow. Tiny speck of red. And my brain automatically resorted to 
she has got a disease and she has now passed the disease onto my son from this tiny speck of red. I didn't even know whether the red was blood or ink or anything, but I just felt like I'd been punched in the gut and I had to stop myself and say, no, why would my best friend want to harm my baby? Why would a tiny speck of red harm my baby? And it was interesting because I was like an outsider looking in, but also going through it at the same time. So I felt like I'd been punched in the gut and that it was happening and he was ill now. But at the same time, I knew it wasn't true. And yeah, really, really strange. But yeah, I really feel for new mothers going through it because it's honestly so difficult and so lonely. And there really isn't enough help for new mums out there. Especially in today's society, you know, we were supposed to have a village and now we're expected to do it in these closed off family units and to do it all, to work, to look after children, to maintain all of these different relationships and activities and not become frazzled and completely and utterly overwhelmed. It's just not realistic. Some things are going to suffer. And as you can see, for me, it's my house. <laughs> Being present with my family is far more important. They're only going to be young ones. And I try to remind myself of that when I see all these pristine houses on Instagram and it makes me feel bad about my own. I know that when I look back, I'm not going to be regretting that my house wasn't pristine. I will regret not spending time, quality time and being present with my children. There will always be time in the future to have a spotless house. Although, not going to lie to you, that's probably not going to be me. I'm probably going to be a crazy cat lady with millions of plants and books and just chaos everywhere. And you know what? I'm happy with that. So here I'm just cleaning the kitchen for the second time after dinner and I've given up for the day. At this point, we'd been cleaning from nine in the morning nonstop until seven o'clock at night. And I was just exhausted, like not only physically, but mentally. So I thought it was better to get a good night's sleep, get refreshed and then be in a good mindset to carry on in the morning. And my goodness, I have been waffling on for 17 minutes now. If you're still here, hi friend, because I feel like we're friends now. I don't think I've ever spoken for seven min 17 minutes straight in my life. It's something I never dreamed I'd be doing when I first started social media. I absolutely hated the sound of my voice and now I talk constantly. <laughs> But yeah, according to people on TikTok, I sound like a number of different people. The first one and the most common one that comes up is Georgia from Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. I don't hear it myself, but it must be true because literally every video I post, I get at least three people saying that that's who I sound like. And another one that comes up a lot is Chloe from Team Mums UK. And I think that's just because we have similar accents. I'm from Leicestershire, she's from Nottinghamshire. But yeah, it does make me laugh, some of the comments I get on there. I've generally had really, really good experiences on TikTok though. I feel like I've built up quite a community over there and it's really, really lovely. For saying it's one of the harshest places when it comes to like hate and troll comments. And don't get me wrong, I do get a lot, a lot of hate. The most recent kind of controversy over there was when I posted about my evening routine. I'd had a really, really hard day. Both kids were being really stressful and I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to show people what a realistic evening can look like when someone's having a hard day. I'd showed that I was trying to cook dinner and my little one, my one-year-old, was at my feet trying to be picked up the entire time, crying. My eldest was refusing to eat his dinner because it had vegetables in and he wanted me to come in and help him eat it, like pick out little bits for him. He finds that less overwhelming when that happens, so I'd done that. And then I made the mistake of letting people know that we're a co-sleeping family. Don't do that on social media. Bad idea. Because essentially everybody decided that co-sleeping was the root of all of my problems. I'd spoken about the fact I wasn't getting much me time. And basically the video was positive. It had a positive message. And it was that I was going to be making time for myself in 2023. Prioritising self-care and things like that. And I'd said that my six-year-old was taking hours to fall asleep sometimes. And he likes me to lie there with him while he falls asleep. Which, by the way, I'm perfectly fine with. They're only going to want cuddles and comfort for such a short space of time in their life. 
But yeah, I said that I was going to kind of stop that. I was going to compromise with him and he'd get 15 minutes of cuddles. And if he hadn't fallen asleep in that space of time, I was going downstairs to have my me time because it's so needed for my mental health. I've put other people before me for so, so long. And 2023 is my year of self-care and looking after me again as well. And all I'll say is if you want to put your life on social media and yourself on social media, you need to have the thickest skin in the world because the comments were horrendous. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that. But if you want to go and check that video out and kind of look at it for yourself, feel free to do that. It's my evening routine on TikTok. But all I'll say is every parenting choice I made and everything I do in terms of parenting it's informed, it was researched even before I had kids and yeah, I had a lot of people telling me I needed to watch Super Nanny. <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh. But no, very confident in my parenting methods. I was just having a bad day and I wanted people to see that that's normal and that everybody has bad days and that parenting isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It can be really, really tough. I think a lot of time on social media, we only see the perfect parts, the good parts, the happy parts, the parts that are easy. And it can make new parents feel like they're failing and that they're inadequate. And I think that's out of order. I meant to mention, it's like half past six in the morning the next day here. I got up extra early to try and crack on before the school run. And I've pretty much got my bedroom done. I just need to like shampoo some of the stains out of the carpet. The boys are trashing the bedroom we worked so hard on yesterday, but it is what it is. I need to get things done. And this is where my day got really, really irritating. Thanks to Charlie not emptying out his pockets before I put a wash on. I refused to do his laundry ever again. I mixed mine with it as well and they're covered in tissue. It looks like it's snowing in the kitchen. And it really set me back. I was so annoyed. It literally took me an hour to kind of brush all of the bits of tissue off. And as you already know, I was so hoping to get the whole house done in just 24 hours. And then we were on to the next day and I was having to deal with this. I was not happy. But at least the baby and the dog really enjoyed it. They were living their best lives rolling around in the snow. Anyway, I hope you're really enjoying the video so far and finding it motivating. I used to love watching these kind of things when I was struggling to get in the mood to clean. And I always wanted to be able to make these kind of videos myself, but years ago, I just never knew how to start. And then with my mini cleaning videos on TikTok kind of taking off, I thought, do you know what? I could actually do this. Why not? So if you're ever thinking, like, I'd really love to do that, my advice is to just do it. Go for it. There are so many different kinds of people in this world and there are people that will resonate with what you have to say and that will find value and help in what you're doing. So, yeah. My biggest hurdle or kind of block that was stopping me from coming onto YouTube and kind of doing the same thing I was doing on TikTok is because of the longer form videos. I didn't know what I was going to ramble on about for a long amount of time, but I'm managing it. Might be boring as anything, but <laughs> if it helps at least one person, I'm happy. I have to use the detractable bit of the hoover on this floor because it was laid down quite badly and it like kind of comes up and my shark hoover is so strong the suction so strong on it it like attaches itself to the floor like a pleck and it doesn't actually hoover so yeah it's quite annoying and can be really time consuming but it is what it is attitude of gratitude guys i have a hoover i have a home i have flooring one day i'll be able to afford proper wooden flooring but for now what we've got is more than enough I originally wanted carpet in here because I just think it's way more homely. But my mum taught me out of it. She was like, no, you've got kids, there'll be spillages. I don't think she was anticipating that my son was going to find a poppet, cover it in marker pen and then print it onto the floor, which is what that mark is in the middle there. If I could go back in time like four years, I would have said to her, no, I'm getting carpet and put my foot down. But my mum scared me back then. And to be honest, she still scares me a bit now. I still panic clean the house every time I know she's coming over. I just don't want the aggro. She's a difficult lady to please. At this point, I was absolutely buzzing because we were so close to finishing the house. Baby was asleep. I'd got Ginny and George on in the background and I was just vibing. Vibing in the stench of urine though because apparently some people don't know how to get their wee in the toilet bowl. Life with boys... The amount of times, though, I'll go to sit on the toilet to have a wee and I'll sit on someone else's wee. 
it makes me so angry just pick the toilet seat up please tell me i'm not the only one that has this problem my youngest hasn't even started potty training yet i'm going to end up designating this toilet for them and i'll have the nice bathroom upstairs then i won't end up sitting on anyone's wee ever again i love watching a good bathroom clean though do you ones that actually need to be cleaned though there are so many cleaning accounts floating around now where people are just cleaning already clean things I tell you what, that's never going to be me. My house is chaos constantly, daily. When I'll do a cleaning TikTok and I'll say, yeah, this is a day's worth of mess, people genuinely don't believe me. They think I'm lying and I've just left it. So I always get a lot of hate for that. But I'm here to show reality and to help people realise that mess is normal. And if that means getting a little bit of hate, then so be it. And yeah, sometimes mess does accumulate. We can't always be top of our game. We're human beings and things crop up and we can get busy, we can get overwhelmed, we can get illnesses, mental health problems. It can be hard to keep on top of things with young kids. As we age, we all have varying levels of mobility. We can experience loss and bereavement. We can find it a lot harder if we have things like ADHD. And you know what? Some of us are just plain messy. And having a pristine house isn't a priority of ours. Do not ever feel that you need to explain or justify a space that you live in to someone who doesn't live there. It's really none of their business. Look how cosy upstairs is looking. I'm so happy. I just hope I can keep it this way. But if I can't, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm just going to pick myself up and try again. I've found filming myself and making these videos really has given me this extra bit of motivation. Because something that was really monotonous, that I was doing day in, day out, and getting trashed over and over again, and that really seemed like a massive waste of my time and my life, has now become a way that I can express myself creatively. I've been able to make a kind of catalogue of motivational videos that not only help me keep motivated, but help other people too. And I find a lot of fulfilment in that. I just want to help people. Growing up messy, I always felt there was something wrong with me. And I always wondered why I couldn't seem to keep on top of things that other people found simple. And younger me could have done with an account like mine now. It would have really helped my self-esteem. So I just hope these videos start to reach the right people. And if you know of anyone that this might help, please share it with them. And I know this is always annoying to hear on YouTube videos, but it would really help me out if you gave this video a like or gave me some feedback in the comments. It is extremely difficult to grow on YouTube. And I can't reach the right people or help anybody if nobody's seeing my videos. So it would really help me out. And the last thing left to do is the stairs. The stairs are a problem area in this house. We all leave things on there with every intention of bringing them up and it never happens. And it just becomes an absolute death trap. And it just looks so nice when the stairs are clear. It's just the little things. Can you tell I'm absolutely elated to have a tidy space? This is a misconception I think a lot of people have when it comes to messy people, that we don't mind the mess. I actually do mind it. It makes me really anxious and irritable, but I'm still messy and I try so hard to keep the clutter at bay. But for some people, it genuinely is harder than others. Our brains are just wired up a bit differently. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much to anybody who's watched up until this point. I'm going to be posting one of these whole house cleans every month and every Saturday I post a little 60 second short just cleaning one room for some quick motivation for you. And if you're one of the people that followed me here from TikTok, I just want to say thank you so much. I cannot express how grateful I am. And um, we've finished. I've finally got an entirely clean house. Two days worth of non-stop hard work and I am so, so chuffed. And I really, really hope you enjoyed watching. And yeah, just a reminder, when it comes to the mess, don't be so hard on yourself and just do your best and have a lovely rest of your day.